up until about May, I worked at Meditech. And Jenkins getting code from Subversion to our build server was one of the last major projects that I led. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I will tell you what could possibly go wrong, what did go wrong, and what we did to get over it. And hopefully that'll help you. And what we learned, hopefully you can gain from it and you don't have to go through the same pain that we did. Here's a rough diagram of the process that we had running. So we've got a subversion commit in Eclipse using the subclips plugin that would go to the repository. And then we used a post commit hook to actually trigger the build job. So the post commit hook would call the build job over in Jenkins. The build job would call, Meditech uses proprietary programming languages. It would call the proprietary job that would test the code to see if it formatted correctly, to see if there were too many semicolons, too many left braces, right braces, curly braces, whatever. And if there was a formatting error, it would fail to build. And nothing would get copied to the application file server. And an email would get sent to the developer, hey, your build failed. You had a formatting issue. Please fix it. Uh, the code is broken on the version control system, but not actually the running server. But if it passed that formatting check, then we would copy the code to the running server, translate it from source code to object code. It's an interpreted language. And if there were any translation errors, uh, then we'd fail the build, but what was on the running server would be messed up. And so a failed build message would go to the developer, and hopefully the developer would do something about that quickly, either revert their code or fix the bug. So here's a very small picture. As you can see, there are scroll bars. And the stats, which I can't memorize, so I put them on the slide. We had 15 releases. Yes, lots and lots of releases. We actually had 15 releases, and probably still do, that have customers actually on them. And I think there are a few releases that, that have customers on them that we don't actually support. And Douglas Adams, again, showing that the answer is 42. He was right here, too. About 42 apps for each of those applications. The largest application having over 21,000 files, 6,600 folders, 37 megabytes. And in the pamphlet, it says it's like 250 million lines of code. So we had some performance issues. Before they used Subversion and before we implemented Jenkins, they would just file their code in our proprietary IDE. And in front of them, it would translate and format. And so yeah, it, it took time out of their day to see that. But they would get that rapid feedback. And so they wanted to continue to have that rapid feedback. And we had to make sure that that happened. Well, when we tried creating projects by release, they would take five minutes per release, which that did not make happy developers. So we wanted happy developers. Uh, one of the things we found was certificate revocation was an issue where our Jenkins was running on a Windows machine, and it was behind our firewall and had no internet connectivity for security reasons. Well, Windows has this thing where it likes to say, oh, you're doing an SSL connection. Let's check that certificate through the internet and see that it's valid. Well, yeah, 60 seconds, then it times out, and then sometimes another 60 seconds would go by. We had to figure this out through Wireshark. We eventually disabled certificate revocation, yay. Um, so that saved us one to two minutes. Uh, AVG, our antivirus, was also killing performance. It's like, OK, you can just ignore what the working copy is, because Subversion knows what's there and knows what, what's right and what's wrong. And we also had to, to stop doing it by release. By release was just too ridiculous. There was too much code. So we made it build by application. And what I didn't say earlier is we're only building the files in a given revision or revision range. Because we're not going to, the developers are going to kill us if we build 6,000 files while they wait. But since only certain code, code is changed, 
then it's only those the code in that revision that we're going to build. But that caused us having some issues like lightning strike commits. So lightning strike commit issue was when I would commit something, and then my coworker would commit something, and like the job would start, and it would say, oh, OK, I'm going to use that revision from my commit. And then his commit would completely get ignored. And then the next job would come along. And that revision, the code was completely ignored. So one of our colleagues in Minnesota actually came up with this concept of a, a last build file. So we squirreled away the revision that last successfully processed and said, OK, this is our revision. And then when we next run the build, we do a revision range from the head revision uh, to the last build revision. And all the code in that folder that's changed in that revision range is what we build off of. There were also crash meta tech jobs. You know, sometimes the network goes down. Sometimes we've got bad code, whatever. Sometimes somebody committed something that, that shouldn't have been committed because it can't be processed correctly. And so again, that had the same kind of issue with the lightning strike, where it would crash. And Jenkins would be like, oh, well, it's done. I, I finished my build. It failed, but whatever. So we started dropping a build success file to alert our Jenkins Ant script that, yes, the build completed, and it completed successfully. So only if we got that success message would we then increment the last build file. So here's a really cool email uh, that my colleague Chad <laughs> developed uh, using Groovy Script, uh, Chad Gilman from Metatech. So uh, it originally, you know, it was just this big text message with all the errors. And so he made it really pretty. It's got build info, it's got the changes, who committed it, what the revision number was, the translation errors, and most importantly, this little link up here. Because before we had that link, we'd get the call. Uh, what does this thing mean? What is Jenkins? Why am I getting an email? So they could go on that link, and it would tell them why the build failed. And these are our major failure points, failure types. I already talked about format error. So translation error would be something like your code is trying to access a data definition that's invalid or invalid in this release. Translation warnings would be something like, oh, you're not following our coding standards. You probably should, or you should probably commit a reason that, that you're not, which would prevent the warning from happening. So those, that latter one is more of a soft error. And then also issues not related to code, which again, I kind of talked about earlier when the job crashes, the network goes out, uh, the job, the slave dies. So I don't know how I'm doing on time. I usually get to like the nine and a half minute point when I get to this slide, but.